I know that you've read my questions. Should I just uh, ask them to you? Yes, yeah, yes, carry on. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the first question, Papaji, is um, who are you? <laughs> I am that. <laughs> From where you, me, she, he, all the rest emerge from, I am that. What do you see when you look at me? Seer. Is a real conversation stoppers. <laughs> <laughs> Papaji, how does an awakened being like yourself see the world? Mm. As my own self? As my own self? When you see your hands, feet, body, mind, senses, intellect, they are part of you, isn't it? You say, I, this all includes. That way you must see the world as one of you, same. As you see, the hand is not different than you, foot is not different than you, even the nail is not different than you, my nails. They are not different than you, like this. So are you saying that there's no place where I end and you begin? There is. There is. There I'm taking you to. <laughs> <laughs> Papa, you speak about freedom. Hmm? <coughs> what is freedom? Freedom? <laughs> A trap. Because <laughs> bondage. You are in the trap, trap. A man who is imprisoned in the jail, he needs to be free, isn't it? He is trapped in the jail. He has heard, he knows, some people are free outside, no? So this you have heard from outside, from the parents, no? From the priests, mm -hmm. from the teachers. Preachers, come to us, we will give you freedom. Come to me, I will give you rest, isn't it? That is the promise. And this is another trap. This is another trap, from one trap to another trap. Now you are trapped in the freedom trap. You should be out of both these traps neither of bondage nor of freedom. Because this is a concept. Bondage was a concept. Now, concept of freedom. 
get rid of both these concepts, then where are you? Here. Here, yeah. yeah. Here is neither a trap of bondage nor of freedom. Here is here. <coughs> not there. Not even here. <laughs> then, a, few, a few days ago, uh, a few days ago, you read a a letter that I presented to you about words, the difficulties with words. Words seem to me to be a very great trap, and it's been so true that through the whole time here, words have been continually inadequate to express. The, the awakening, I can't, even to express why words are inadequate is impossible mm. because I'd have to compare them to what was adequate and I can't do that in words. But one word that's thrown around a lot in the West and in the East is the word enlightenment. Is what you speak of enlightenment? Mm. Enlightenment <coughs> is the knowledge itself, knowledge itself, not knowledge of persons, things, ideas. Pure it's knowledge. Only knowledge, not a word. Only knowledge, where does not exist anything, no imagination of the past, no imagination of the future, not even the present. I can't imagine a state with no imagination. Ah, that's what is called <laughs> bondage. That's what is called bondage and that's what is called suffering and that's what is called samsara. And if I tell you, do not imagine, don't have any imaginations right now. Imagination is images, no? Image edition. Image. It has come from images, imagination. You are thinking of the images. And all images belong to the past. Don't recall the past and don't aspire anything of the future. Imagination goes. Imagination is out of the mind. Mind is past. I still fall into this trap when you tell me not to imagine anything, it's like telling me not to think of a hippopotamus. Not to think anything? If I tell you, don't think of, a, don't think of an elephant, mm. the first thought that would come into your mind would be therefore, elephant. Therefore, it is your question of imagination. Without imagination, I don't stay without imagination. I don't tell you to ask for any imaginations. I say, don't imagine anything of the past, present and future. That's what I say. I don't give you any imagination. Free of all imaginations. If you are free from imaginations, you are free of time also. Any image will remind you of the time. Any image will remind of the time because when the images go in the waking state, you see images, mm -hmm. persons, things, ideas. And when you go to sleep, all these vanishes. And now you are sleeping. Where are these images? Where are the persons? Where are the things? In sleep state, mind you. In sleep, the things are still there. Mm -hmm. In sleep, even the things are still there. They don't go away during sleep. When you sleep? Mm -hmm. They're still there. Who? Everything that was there when you went to sleep is still there when you go to sleep. You are... Just not aware You are describing the dream state. I tell you the sleep state. I will take you. When do you sleep? What time did you sleep? About 11.30 at night. 11.30. So... 11, 
29 minutes 29 seconds what happens in the 30th second 30th second before 11:30 you said no mm-hmm. 30th second belongs to sleep or belongs to waking state it's this zone in between this neither here nor there okay now thing. the 30th second is gone now finished now already you said here and there and here and there now you are deciding there you reject everything all images all persons all relationships all ideas are gone now and you jump in somewhere after that 30th second no time also no space also no country also now you speak of sleep So do you do you compare this state? No, no, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> First you speak of sleep. <laughs> And how long do you sleep? Maybe seven hours. But you have spent not even three seconds. I tell you, after the sleep, you slept now. Describe something of the sleep. What you are going to speak is the next waking state. the previous state from where you jumped into this state no difference so give me what happens when you are sleeping dreaming huh dreaming just dreaming what dreaming dreaming see dreaming dreaming just dreaming 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 not dream state sleep dreaming is the same state you see what you see here in the dreaming also you see some robber has robbed you hmm? mm-hmm. or some tiger is pounced on you and you have fear same fear so when you see tiger there in the dream and tiger was the waking state same fear is the same tiger is the same i tell you when you sleep what do you see when you sleep nothing ha huh? nothing ah that's a right answer <laughs> that's right answer no why did you like this nothingness when you see images men and all that when you liked so many things mm-hmm. in the world why did you reject them and you offer yourself to go in the lap of nothingness why i was tired my body is tired Uh, so to regain your energy you went to the reservoir of energy of nothingness yeah. and if you don't touch that reservoir what will happen to you where do you go crazy uh, crazy <laughs> yeah. Yeah, crazy yes yes and if always you are in that state of nothingness of sleep state while awake i will tell you how to keep sleep while awake and tell you how to awake while asleep that will be fine isn't it yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay now you come from the sleep the last second of the sleep state waking has not yet come in waking has not come and the sleep state is living the very first moment the very first second very first second of the wake, next waking state now what should experience my senses call me back to huh? the body what do you say my senses call me back to the world okay what happened to this experience of happiness when you were sleeping what have, what have you brought from this Six hours, nothingness. Where did you do? What did you do about this? It's gone. Hmm? It's gone. It's gone. It's. I'm relaxed. Okay. Refreshed. Achha. But there's nothing remaining. Achha. So me. you prefer tension to relaxation. <laughs> there's a question about that later. <laughs> <laughs> But if you understand, perhaps you will not ask me the next question. <laughs> so when you come when you come out of a cinema hall you are seeing 
a dance in the cinema hall, mm -hmm. a dance, and from ten to five they show dances, you know, in the cinema halls, in the maybe in the theater you are gone to, and then you come home, and your friends ask, how was, it? what did you speak to them? It was a beautiful show. Ah, beautiful. <coughs> so this thing you can bring there, and you brought nothing from your sleep. And who woke up first? Who woke up from this state of happiness? You were happy, you know, in this sleep state. If it was not happy state, no one will leave back their beloved ones who are next door to them. They say good night now to their dear ones, near ones. They say good night, let me sleep. By something superior, something higher, something more beautiful to them to be alone. Mm -hmm. Therefore, when you wake up, who awoke up first? And you did not bring that impression of the happiness that you enjoyed for six or seven hours in the night. <laughs> and about the dances, you, you brought this impression. So you have to create a new habit, you see. And that you can create only in the satsang, as you went to theater, because you have been going to the theater, and your parents took you to theater when you were a small boy, so this habit is to you to describe that where the senses are engaged and you enjoy it. But free of the senses, that pleasure, your parents have not told you, therefore you do not know only it is known in the satsang only. Therefore, you are here. Yes. So when you wake up, who wakes up first? It's the eye that wakes up first. Okay. Hmm? The eye wakes up. I wakes up. Okay. The eye has waken up. When the eye wakes up, the past wakes up. When the eye wakes up, past, present, future wakes up means time wakes up. With the time, space wakes up. Now time and space, sun wakes up, moon wakes up, stars wakes up, mountains wake up, rivers wake up, forests wake up, men wake up, birds, animals, everything wakes up when the eye wake up. And this eye was sleeping during the sleep stage, everything was quiet. Now you find out don't touch the eye again, and you will again sleep while awake for one single second. Half of the single setting, quarter of the single second will do. Don't touch the eye. I think you can very well afford to do it. Not touch the eye. And tell me, are you not sleeping? Again, back to the same step. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> In that instant, everything is like a dream. Uh, now, this eye, when you know this thing, mm. now, let this eye, same eye, now wakes up, let everything wake up now. In this eye, in this eye, let everything wakes up, and it is going to be one of you, the same part. All these men, men of the past, present, and future are included because there's no time, there's no past. And this is called awaking while sleeping, and sleeping while awake. And you are always in happiness, always awake. And this awakening is called knowledge, freedom, whatever, truth. <laughs> Not the names, don't touch the names. So get rid of all the words that you have so far heard from any quarter. And you will see really who you are. Thank you.
Now don't sleep, you have to. I live next door, next door to a, a baby. <laughs> we have to agree to speak in English here. <laughs> I live next door to a car repair shop down near your house, and sometimes uh, I feel that my only impediment to being continually in this state is that they're always banging on the cars and hitting them back into shape. And the question here is, how can, how can I remain quiet and in this instant when the sensors are continually drinking in the environment? That's mm. their job. That's what they do. Every second they're drinking in the environment. <coughs> so when the child is learning how to walk, the parents supply him some kind of uh, crutches, no? How to learn walk, isn't it? They hold parents, his hand. Huh? They hold his hand. Yeah, to hold, hand. and then he learns to walk with the. And then when when he grows up, he, he throws away. He can walk independently himself. So in the beginning, when you see disturbance when you meditate or when you study or whatever it is, it's better to change the environment. First of all, you are advised. When you take a house or an environment, you must avoid, you must look at the neighborhood first. Neighborhood you must look at. Is it a garbage of pigs? <laughs> Noisy people? Fish market? <laughs> supermarket. So you must avoid all these things in the beginning because you can't meditate. You can go to forest, meditate. So you are advised and when you learn, when you can learn meditation, how to meditate, if you have learned the art of meditation, you go and sit in the middle of the fish market and then supermarket, and then here at Shalimar Crossing <laughs> and Hazrat Gan Square, you will not hear the noise because you are not here, you are meditating just as you sleep. That is called sleeping while awaking. And till, till you cannot learn this it's better to avoid the circumstances, but it is preferable to see before you get into any apartment, what is my neighborhood? Neighborhood has to be good more than your apartment. It's better not look in your apartment is very good and there are geysers and good, nice beds. No. You look at the neighborhood first mm -hmm. and then you can live amicably and particularly, you find out the people who belong to your own way of life. Then you will not be disturbed, you will be discussing your own uh, matters of your own study, as teachers will like to be with teachers, philosophers with philosophers, workers with the workers, and they feel very one with each other, you see. So once you have learnt it, you can do whatever you like. You just mentioned meditation. I'd like to follow up on that. What, what is meditation to you? What do you do see as meditation? There's so many kinds of meditation that are practiced, and so many of them rely on looking at phenomena, watching breath, seeing thoughts arise and fall. What is meditation? What you are speaking is not meditation, that is concentration, mm. not meditation. You are speaking of concentration, not meditation. 
meditation means not to concentrate on any object is called meditation not to bring in any object of the past in the mind and do not use your mind that's called meditation don't use your mind that's called meditation and where the mind is used that's called concentration because mind will only cling to some object that belongs to past and have you been told to meditating without the aid of the mind that's a hard question to answer most meditation that i've done involves techniques for dealing with thoughts that arise but the point of the meditation seems to be a thoughtless state a state where no thoughts arise ah uh, yes that's called meditation where the no thoughts arise that's called meditation but thoughts arise inevitably mm-hmm. thoughts arise how do you deal with thoughts that arise i will tell you how to deal and that i will i will know how the thought arises okay you will tell me i think you can devote me a time equal to finger snap will you one instant moment i say this much time i will need you to stop your thought okay <laughs> okay what is a thought what is a mind there is no difference between thought and mind isn't it thought arises from mind yes thought arises from mind and mind is bundle of thoughts without thoughts there is no mind without thought there is no mind now i tell you and what is mind i i is mind mind is past clinging to past present future clinging to time clinging to objects is called mind and where does the mind arise from i singular when the i rises mind rises mind rises senses rises senses rises world rises now find out where does the i arise from where does the i arise from and tell me if you are not quiet tell me go on go on commenting what's happening i'm listening to you speak okay after that you have listened now now i tell you now i tell you where does this mind or now we have arrived at mind is i Mm-hmm. and mind arises from i if there is no i as previously we began to begin with sleep to waking i rose the mind rose now you find out the reservoir of i where does the i rises from the name wait 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 you are not far away every repeat again <clears throat> there is a channel this is channel canal it comes from reservoir and you follow the beginning of this channel and reach the reservoir reservoir from where it takes its beginning like that i tell tell you fire follow the i thought i where does it rise from this word only i and i tell you how to do it how to find the answer i tell you i will tell you how to find get the answer 
because you are not to box like Muhammad Ali, like this thing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's very simple. To know thyself is very simple as you rub a rose petal. Yes. This is knowledge, a realization is so simple as a rose petal in your fingers. You see. <laughs> Not difficult at all. Difficulty arises when you make any effort. So you don't make any effort to go to the reservoir of I. Don't make any effort and don't think either. So reject effort and reject thought. Reject thought means I thought. Any kind of effort Like uh, hmm? in in doing in no oh, not doing what doing no it feels like a, a comet that's skirting the atmosphere and flashing briefly and then disappearing back into space. Oh, that's, right. okay. that's how it how sure. it is for me. It's, okay. it's like these momentary sparks or flames, and then there's the darkness of eye again. That, that and not again. First we are, again means descending, again means going to past, isn't it? I done that work and again I will do it. Means repetition, calling the past only. No again. No again here. Again is past, no? To regain, again is called again. Is regain. So I tell you, you get rid of this I, don't make effort, and don't think either for one single second, half of the second, quarter of the second is quite enough. And this much time you have not spent in 35 million years, my dear young Jeff. <laughs> Here is the time. <laughs> I find it impossible not to try to do it. What? I find it impossible not to try to do it. Mm. There's try. always a trying. There's something trying. There's a there's a sense that there's a, an expectation yes. and a sense of trying always. That that does not seem. Doing true. has been told to you by your parents, by the priest by the teachers, by the preachers, now at least you can keep quiet for a quarter of a second and see what happens. <laughs> that doing you have inherited from your parents, do this and do that. You went to priest, do this thing and don't do that. And then from the society and from everywhere else. Don't do this and do this. Now I tell you, get rid of doing and not doing. Doing and not doing. And when you go to doing, you have gone back to parents, no? You have learnt doing from parents, from the mother first, no? Hmm? Yes. If you did not handle a spoon and fork, Correctly, she slapped you on the table, isn't it? You don't do this thing. Yes. <laughs> so do's and don'ts first came from the mother. And then from the priest. You have to go to a particular temple, not to somebody else's temple. Do, don't. If you do, you will go to heaven. If you don't, hell. 
sinner. So I say, get rid of both, doing and not doing, and see at least the taste of it. How it tastes. Other tastes, doing tastes we have seen. There are six billion people tonight, and they are tasting, doing, and tell me what is the result of doing. Well, recently we have seen the result of doing in the Gulf. We have seen all over, we have seen three wars also here. This is the result of doing, hatred between man and man, doing, killing. Now let us see if something could be done by not doing and let this love spring up once again as was in the time of Buddha Ashoka here recently. Yeah. Papaji, now I even feel calling you Papaji, it's putting you in this parent role, so <coughs> it feels a little awkward. Uh, this parent tells you, don't <laughs> make a call. <laughs> Papaji, they call it, but they must listen to Papaji, one word only. <laughs> Otherwise, if you don't listen to this Papaji, and you will have many Papajis for another self. <laughs> Be my last Papa Papaji. <laughs> you awakened spontaneously at the age of eight. This is a, a question I've written here, and I, I know you've, you've probably read it, but it begins, the question begins with that I'm a writer, and I find it very natural to write. I've been writing since I was eight years old, and people are always coming to me and asking for advice on writing, and I, I'm just saying, just do it naturally. Just write as you would speak. There's nothing that's easier. And they can't do it. They need to make some effort to do it. <coughs> you yourself awakened spontaneously and completely naturally at the age of eight years old. Why are you so confident that it should be so easy and so natural for me? I've spent 35 million years asleep. <laughs> <laughs> I must have also spent, because I know quite many, as Buddha also says, see, he has spent many, many, many reincarnations before, and he knows it. Everyone knows it. He knew it, you see. A slight mistake done in 253 incarnations ago, he remembered very much, see. <laughs> yes, yes, like this thing. So when he came to spontaneity, spontaneous, he has also been doing, he was going to teachers also. And then in this, in this life, he, he has also gone to several teachers. He was having a very comfortable life. He was a prince, having the beauty of the land in the form of Yashodra, gift of married life, suckling the breasts of the mother, and this young man wakes up, I have to search something else. This is most beautiful palace, elephants, dancing beauties, wife, son, something else is waiting for me. He has thrown away his robe, took away his horse, and some confident man, leave me out of the boundaries. <laughs> And then he saw one carps was going away, carps <laughs> was going, and he changed his robe and took away the car, the sheet, which was the body, dead body was covered, and he put on his shoulder to throw away his ego, his princely garments, <laughs> and put all his diamonds on the carps. 
Patrick the Horse. <laughs> Patrick the Horse with love. And the horse also kissed his feet and collapsed and died. This compassion could not be seen. This is in the beginning. He was not yet enlightened. This rise came in his mind. <laughs> Just a renunciation and desire for home, go home. <laughs> then he went, sat under a tree quietly. And this Siddhartha prince became Buddha. So spontaneously he could not speak. Ananda was the first man, master. What's your experience? He kept quiet. So you are asking me direct question. I do not know, but I was there. It was very spontaneous. It was very spontaneous. I could not, I had no background also. Didn't do any meditation. Didn't read any book. I was in Pakistan, therefore these books were not available because they were in Sanskrit. I had not studied Sanskrit, I was studying Persian. It came to me, how? I do not know. Perhaps it has chosen me. It has chosen me. <laughs> the truth reveals to a holy person, and I did not have any qualification. I was not educated at that time, eight years, second standard. So I didn't know. Still I am saying, what is it, what is it, what is it? Each time I am more in love with it, every moment. <laughs> <laughs> All my life I wondered what it would have been like to live in the time of the Buddha and to have sat at the feet of the Buddha and I feel I know that answer to that question now. <laughs> you have been with him, you have, must have been with him, otherwise you would not have asked these questions, you would never have come to this. What about the other people, six billion people, why they don't they come in satsang? Why you? What about your neighbors? What about your parents? What about your society? Why you are chosen? You are chosen for this purpose. And when you will know this, you will see it was only this instant. Only this instant. Nothing had happened before. Nothing will happen in future. In this instant you thought you are bound and this instant you found that you are free. And in this instant you will know there is no freedom, no bondage. I am what I am. In this instant I know that. Hmm? In this instant I know that. You know that? I see. I yeah. see. Yeah. I am happy you are a young man. The older people pass away, pass away in going to clubs. <laughs> yes. I went to one club in Europe. I said, these are, they were playing only rolling one uh, rubber ball from this end to that end, from that end, rubber ball. Then I asked one person, is there old man? No, 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 no. They are not old men. They are very old men because up to 80 years, they don't come for this sports. So they are above 90. They can't go to clubs now. Up to 80, they can go to clubs and dancing and here and there they can go. They don't come to this, this kind. And that was old people's sports club. <laughs> because the society, young sons don't accept them because they are coughing, they are coughing, they have to go to old homes. <laughs> so 
And now you can start your own cricket team. Huh? <laughs> yes, yes, I'm coming right from the match. Therefore, I was only five minutes before time. Otherwise, I could have come a little early and skip the food. Expected as much. <laughs> Papaji, can mind. Uh, one second, Monica. Oh, very hot. hot class. It's very hot. Thanks. Oh. Papa, do you have you have water? Oh, water, I don't need anything. <laughs> no, 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 it's hot. It's hot under these lights. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Papa, can mind assist in the process of realizing freedom? Yes, it does. It does. Mind is your foe and mind is your friend also. When attached to sense objects, it's your enemy. And when it aspires to come to satsang, the same man, same mind is a friendly mind. <laughs> it, it will give you freedom. Same mind. That's a big relief for some reason. <laughs> Yeah, take me, yeah, yeah, take you. <laughs> Could take you somewhere there, you see. It is the same mind, you see. Yeah. When we speak of realizing freedom, who is realizing freedom? This who itself. This who itself is realizing freedom. This who is asking the question. It is the same who who feels that this who is now bound after having known this who will show you its who-ness. I know. <laughs> look, look here, look here, Jeff, I am the same who which brought you here. <laughs> That was St. Francis who said, what you are looking for is who is looking. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Smart guy, that St. Francis. Is who, when you say only who, say only who, W-H-O, who. Hmm? Where do you find? Tell me. Where? (laughs) Where do you find? You have to add something, then the reply will come, who are you? Then they will give simply say who, then who will appear to you? Simply say who. (laughs) 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 Simply say who. Where does it come? Where does it sit? I'm going to be sitting here like an owl in a minute. (laughs) You often say that the force that has brought us to satsang, the force that has brought us here, will take care of us. What force is that? The same force which has brought you here, the same force which is speaking, the same force which is asking me this question, force is the same. The force is now become the questioner. The same force is now asking. And this force is asking, keep quiet. <laughs> After you, Papaji, I could interview anybody. (laughs) (laughs) A 
lot of the writing I do is about science, and I, there's a scientific question. In the scientific view, I'll read this because it took so long to, to sure. word it just perfectly. In the scientific view, everything that we perceive from an apple to pure grace is a result of neural signals and chemical processes. From the biological perspective, the miracle of consciousness has a direct physical cause. How can we be certain that consciousness, consciousness, awareness, awakeness, is not just a chemical reaction, and that the realization of emptiness is more than a mere quieting of our brain cells? <coughs> I think the science is doing very well in the latest researches. Science has done very well, and uh, I don't have any difference with what science is doing. We are living in the 20th century, and we are very lucky people to enjoy the benefits of the researches of the science. And uh, I don't, I can't reject uh, science, the science, that scientific discoveries. Otherwise, you cannot come from California to here in just 20 hours. <laughs> yes, so we should accept it. But uh, where does this intellect of discovery comes from? You are speaking from cells of the brain. The discoveries has been made up to, to discover the brain, the cells of the brain, as you say. Mm -hmm. Where do these cells are getting energy? Cells are getting energy, yet the science has not discovered. Only the frontal lobe of the brain is now discovered by the science. With the latest implements of, this, of the science, scientific instruments, but the, with the hind lobe of uh, the brain is yet, which is empty, is not the science, anything, any instrument is not discovering what does this contain from where these cells become active. That is yet not discovered, I hope they could do it one day. And this emptiness itself gives force to these cells. And these cells now send signals throughout the body we have billions and trillions of cells in the body and these cells activate in the form of thoughts and movements of everything of the limbs and the senses and of the mind or whatever you do responsible for the cells and this is the creation from the beginning of emptiness to the cells and the, from the cells to intellect intellect to the mind and mind to the body and senses and objects, you see. We have these perceptions through the cells. Then once upon a time, these cells will get fatigued mm -hmm. by doing this work because they have been suffering. Because we have been using these cells for millions of years, they want to take rest. And now they want to take rest and they they will have a conference together, conference together, these cells, and they will protest against the mind now. We will not listen to you. Enough, we have listened for 35 million years, and now they will stand up and dance. We want to be free. We want to be free of the cells. <laughs> no more cells. No, the <laughs> Each cell is giving you a next incarnation. Each cell, because what you desire will enter directly into this cell. And that will be lying hidden. It will appear in the proper circumstances and reincarnate, this is the cells which have reincarnated and has become mine now. Now when they will protest and want to be free. And now when your question started, it is 
And when these cells become quiet and you say emptiness, no, this is what you say, freedom is the process of chemical reaction. Maybe freedom, maybe emptiness Mas is just a, a chemical thing happening in the mind. Mind, yes, uh, maybe or, in or the or mind. the brain, the brain, yes, not yes, the mind, yes, the brain. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, let it happen. But who is aware of this chemical happening <laughs> of the cells, some higher force, some subtler force than the cell that is even conscious of what is happening to the cells. It is aware. What is that force now? Actually, Papa, that brings me to my next question. Mm -hmm. huh? <laughs> What's it? The, the question, the, the answer that I want to give you is, is grace, Atman, the, the, the grace, the Atman, the, the, thing, the, the, large, the larger context in which we are all existing in our forms. But the question that I, I follow, the, the, other, the chemical question with, is, is that what we call Atman or grace, yeah. Atman, <laughs> grace. Oh. And in reading this question, please understand, I want you and everyone in this room to understand that these questions and the asking of these questions, I feel grace in your presence, Papa. And I, I'm not saying that I don't feel it or I'm denying it. I'm just trying to understand and remove the <coughs> doubt between okay. the freedom, okay? <laughs> that this, this, this grace, it sounds to me like something, like a force that must encompass everything, even more than everything, beyond what li is li larger than everything. But it also sounds to me like something I'm being asked to believe in, that's something I must have faith in. And the question is, is faith, is faith in the supreme force a prerequisite for freedom? Must we have faith in a, this force to awaken to freedom? Mm -hmm. Does what you are doing, what you are teaching, what you are giving us require mm -hmm. faith? The faith word is coined by the founders of the religions, first of all. Yes. Isn't it? The faith word, first was Christ, coined by, when you say the word for faith, you must go back, if you belong to any religion, so and so founder has told us, different religions. So they tell you to follow someone of the past. When you speak the word faith, you must see that your mind goes to the past. Tell me any instance when there is a question of faith and it doesn't belong to past. I can do that, Papa. Hmm? I can do that. I can say that grace... No, no. You are asking a faith first. I am replying faith. Okay. I am not touching Atman and grace yet. The word faith is associated for me with religions and with dead religious leaders. Yes, uh, and this takes you to the past images only. That's right. Have faith in this God or that God, in this statue or the other statue. And I don't tell the children over here to have faith in anything of the past. I don't teach faith. I teach knowledge. Knowledge has got nothing to do with faith. Faith brings you to the past and knowledge to the instant presence. This is the difference between faith and knowledge. Coming to Atman and grace, there's no difference. Because when you use the word Atman, the mind does not hold any person, anything, any concept in the mind, nor the grace. When you utter the word grace, you can't think it is coming from such and such person, such and such image, such and such thing. That comes faith. I have already described. Grace is more than space, higher, subtler, supreme than even space. Where the space arises from, the question is, that is Atman. 
through which, through whose grace, the sun shines. This shine of the sun is that grace, moon in the night, hmm? the hardness of the rock, softness of the flower, flow of the river, movement of the air, and wave of the ocean. What is this? That which moves the air, not the movement, not the movement, that which moves the air, not the wave, that which arises the wave from the ocean, that. That is the, that. It's the ultimate mystery then, huh? isn't it? It's the ultimate mystery. Yeah, call it mystery. And that mysteriousness is called grace. No difference. You can call it mystery. Call it mystery. It is still the mystery, and mystery will remain always secrecy. Secrecy also. Secret. Mystery. So very sacred that you will not be able to tell me because when I took you to that place, you could not tell me. Such secret, such secret, if it was not a secret, surely you will tell me because you know me, I will not deceive you. And you did not tell me what has happened during this instant, you didn't tell me. Why? It is so secret. Two cannot walk abreast. So much secret. Two cannot walk abreast. Not even one. Not the body, not the mind, not the senses. Hmm? Not even the intellect, not even the discretion, not even the discretion. That is that. And this is mystery what you speak. And if it is not a secret, you can speak to me because I am trying for the last sixty years. Please, I cannot solve this mystery. This secret I cannot know. I am old man. You are very young. You can please speak to me. I want to see face to face. I want to kiss him. I want to kiss her because I have not seen this beauty anywhere on the face of this planet. Because I am in love with someone that beloved I have not seen. Isn't it? <laughs> How did I get here? Huh? How did I end up sitting here at, at your feet like this? What kind of miracle is this that's put me in this spot right now? You have called them. You have called them. Everybody. It is your, your invitation. <laughs> mm. Papaji. You recommended in yesterday's satsang that we don't read books about awakening because it just creates the preconception and expectations of what awakening will feel like, what it will taste like, what it will be like. Mm. I agree with you. But what do you hope to convey then in, in an interview that will be published in the West? When I don't recommend any book because when you read a book of anybody, of anybody, whether it belongs to any sage, saint, even a Buddha, I won't recommend you to read even any sutras, any sacred books. I don't recommend you because what will happen when you will read a book, 
surely you will like some something out of the book a good book means book means a good book book itself <laughs> sutra itself mm-hmm. upanishad itself hmm? even diamond sutra even hard sutra vajra chedika sutra whatever it is <laughs> now what happens you have read it after having reading that you liked it no and you have stored it in the memory isn't it good thing must have stored in the memory and now what will happen now you sit for meditation for freedom and you want to be free you want freedom and this pre-planned pre-planned thing that you have heard this thing will be your post post experience that will come in front and you will call here is my experience and you will forget that this was already stored in the memory and whatever you get is the past experience and this is not going to be the past any time this is a deception of the mind mind is going to teach you deceive you cheat you always so you don't depend on the mind what the mind likes you you don't listen to him you dislike but the mind likes what will happen so this store of the memory memory means past mm-hmm. so this thing you are planning now in meditation i have to arrive at this thing it is written like this thing so this is already your experience your post experience is pre-planned experience and you are going to have it because whatever the mind thinks it manifests you see whatever you think it manifests <laughs> you must have thought of this samsara and there is manifestation this is your thought this is your wish that's why it is here it looks so real because you have faith in this reality that this is real this samsara is real and once you will experience reality is somewhere else then you will reject it instantly you will have a very new very fresh experience very new each moment a new experience you see not with the mind with no mind with no mind all alone that's called experience i don't use the word experience again because all experience are planned from the past it's not going to be an experience it's going to be a very direct very direct meeting very direct meeting for the first time you will meet someone when you will go to meet it after denuded your mind after denuded all the concepts of the mind in that dress you have to go undress everything nude even denude yourself of the nudity also understand that much sacred is the chamber of this beloved if you want to meet go who stops you now itself so simple so simple to dress up takes time to undress what is there <laughs> yesterday uh, you told a story about a guru who was so sick who was so sick who was so deeply engrossed in meditation 
<laughs> that he, he didn't care for his sick son. Someone else came up and asked you about that. That also stuck in my craw. It brought up for me the issue of responsibility. And I want to ask you, is freedom also freedom from responsibility? Mm. For this man who came here during the satsang again came to me at my place and I told him this is the story of the saint and his wife and their son that I told you mm -hmm. and you don't relate to any one of these three, neither son nor wife nor husband. This is the story of a saint and his wife. You have to become either a saint or his wife, then you will know. Or at least his son. <laughs> then he kept quiet. <laughs> I am satisfied, he says. Regarding responsibilities, responsibilities are there so long you have ego in the mind that this belongs to me and that belongs to to him. Then only responsibility arises and uh, and then when you understand who is the father of this creation before that before your birth this samsara, this creation was already there. For millions of years it was there. Who looked after this? You are looking after your responsibilities, liabilities, just for 30 years. And after 70 years you will not look after again. So your responsibilities and liabilities, the span of your duties is only 100 years. You know? What about billions of years, you see? Billions of years responsibilities, who's taking, who's sharing? And if, even if you take responsibility towards your family, towards your son, towards your wife, towards your society, towards your country, and towards all others, <coughs> so you have to move your mind, our body, our intellect, isn't it? Yes. To fulfill these responsibilities, three things you need. Good health, body, good body, good mind, good intentions, compassion, you need. Where do you draw these things from? Energy to move the body, to help others physically. Mm -hmm. To move the mind, to send good compassion, good thing to others, mentally. Where do you draw this energy to act? It's drawn from, from grace. From grace, okay. If you know, if you know that I am drawing the energy from the grace, therefore, and then how come that it becomes your responsibility? <laughs> now this bulb is shining, now this light is there. And now this lamp says, it is my light. It's my light. If I like to shine, I will shine. And if I don't, it will be darkness. No. This light is not coming from here. Not even in this bhavan. The reservoir is somewhere else. Generator is somewhere else. So if this lamp says, I am bright, due to me, you can see. It's mistaken. It doesn't know. Where does this current comes from? Where the electricity comes from? And where the electricity is produced from? Even the electrical engineers I called, I asked him, there was one electrical engineer of this place, chief engineer electricity. I said, what is electricity? <laughs> because if you break the wire through which this current is passing and gives us light, I don't see anything. I don't see anything if you cut the wire. He said, yet we do not know. Yet we do not know. And electricity is produced 
and it works somehow, it works and it generates electricity, but actually it comes from somewhere that still we do not know. It works, but before that, where we get this energy, power, power, that still we do not know. So we forget, when we forget, and we have tensions and sufferings and everything, and when you lay all these things before the father, and when you are five year old, up to five year old, your father were looking after, only when you grew old and you felt that now I am quite enough, you don't care for your parents, okay, you work yourself, and parents also will not care. You do whatever you want. So like this, parent is happy. Parent is happy. You are working yourself. Work. And if you can't work, if you are in trouble, go to him. He will say, he will kiss you. My dear son, come to me. I will look after you. So don't forget that this energy through which I am working belongs to Atman, grace, and you will have 200% more energy to work as you are doing now. You go back to your country and see. This is coming from grace. It is my good luck that I have seen this grace. I am working and I have given this opportunity to look after my children, my wife, my relations, my society, my country, like that. You will see a new life from here because many people who are going from here, they are writing to me, where well, this energy is coming from. We are busy already, but now we have taken more jobs. And we still we don't fatigue ourselves. We are very young now, and we, have, we, we are becoming as 30 years younger than what we came to look now. That's <laughs> what <laughs> you are, sure. You and see? I would be eight years old. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> It's a good time for an awakening. Yes, yes, you know, all of you, right? yes, yes, otherwise it's too old. It's too old. It has to be got in childhood, childhood, youth. In old age, you see, again responsibilities, children will trouble you, isn't it? Children will trouble you, society will trouble you, diseases will trouble you. Diseases. The body is a disease itself, complications, then you will think of diseases only. You can't concentrate. Mm. Mind is concentrated on the particular disease that you are having. <coughs> and mental ailments, physical troubles, and then some trouble from outside, relationships, so many things. So you have to do it in prime youth, you see. Childhood is the best. And then youth is better. Old age, I, some old people have also come, come here, and they will be all right next time. <laughs> One woman was here, no? Yesterday there was a woman. Yeah, there was a woman, she said, very happy. So I, I said, I have to see that woman. You know, after yesterday's satsang, the woman who came and saw you, she was a bit older than I am, and mm -hmm. she seemed to have a wonderful visit with you up here. And I looked at her and I thought, I was very comforted because I thought, I still have time. <laughs> <laughs> you are much, you, why time, what, why? You get rid of time here, no? Why time? <laughs> why depend on time? Time is past. So when you go, from here, you throw away the time in Lucknow and itself. That's all. You don't need time. You know, Papaji, this is uh, not a planned question. No, this happened. Actually, what I say, throw away your time means <laughs> there was one man. He was he was about fifty years. This man from LA. Anybody from LA? Los Angeles. Yes, he was. But anybody here, they know it. He came and. He was not happy with his son because he was always here. <laughs> so he didn't like and he wanted to help him in industry he was having. He's quite a rich man. 
and he had brought hundreds of questions and he came to fight with me why I am keeping why I have kidnapped his son <laughs> so they have taken three rooms in Clark's hotel and uh, next morning he came to see see me and he was sitting quiet I didn't know who this man and his son introduced he is my father and uh, we came last evening we could not come in the night we had rest and he didn't doesn't tell me he has some questions and he sat down in front of me in, in my house and then he said you came to me last night you sat you sat by my bed in the class hotel and you have replied all my questions here is were the questions and now I have to, nothing to ask and about the time he was having inter, international time watch on his head and he placed on my this thing I don't need time also now and he stayed here for 20 days and you know American without watch I have never <laughs> seen I've never seen I he no watch so he kept here it was lying there Americans even while going to sleep they have watch under the pillow <laughs> go to bathroom with the watch even the watch is there yeah. so careful so punctual even in the bathroom you see. <laughs> so while going the watch was lying I said I said what about the time now you need time instead of asking people he said no I am same regular same regular getting up sleeping without time I have forgiven time I don't need it I said no you take my time now on you I I bound the watch on his wrist myself you take away this far so you will know the beauty of no time no time no mind who will look after you when you take the responsibility of time mind and all these things you have to share and if you today on the supreme power it will take care of you very well <laughs> Papa a few more questions do you yes, feel You asked me no political questions, but you know there's a political question in here, and I'm going to ask it, and I hope you can answer it. <coughs> Nearly all of us in this room, I would say, with very small exceptions, what is it? nearly all of us in this room, with only one or two exceptions, I'd say we're all very well-to-do people from free countries. <laughs> Visiting you in Lucknow is a privilege that all of us can afford. For many people, though, freedom still means relief from political oppression, from imprisonment, from torture. So this question is, is external bondage an impediment to internal freedom? And if it is, do you see a place for <coughs> political activism in the world? After, <coughs> after, after. <coughs> political activism. Political activism. Political activism. <coughs> Is, is, is bondage, <coughs> literal bondage, imprisonment, no human rights, a situation like that, first, is that an impediment to personal freedom? No, no impediment. <coughs> no impediment at all. Impediment is ego, created by ego. <coughs> <coughs> I have to do this and I have not to do this. There is no impediment at all <coughs> because you are not the doer. You are not the doer. The supreme power is working through you and it will gu guide you <coughs> as the circumstances arise. <coughs> <coughs> mm. 
This is a, this question is still, I feel it still needs to be answered. Um, I, I, I've spent some time because of my own feelings and sense of responsibility working for human rights and people in other countries like Burma or Tibet who are under terrible oppression, who are being killed or hurt by people who are taking control of them. You say that the body itself is a disease and that sometimes in old age the body exerts a tyranny that makes it very difficult to wake up. I would think that being in a political country where they would kill you just for coming to satsang and there are such countries still where if we were to get together in a group like this they would just shoot you down with a machine gun that such a thing must be an impediment to freedom and there must be a need for people who will take action against the oppressors. <coughs> you yourself did this in your 20s, if your biography is accurate. How, how do you view that yeah. kind of action? Now the world is moving to disaster itself. To disaster itself it shows the movement of these this population where they are moving to destroy the human race itself. <coughs> Yet the only way is now to try not the atom bombs, not the chemical weapons and let us try now <coughs> compassion and love towards not only human beings, towards all beings. Let us try this thing. And this is for the trial's sake. We are spreading the message of peace and love. We are starting here as a trial. I hope it will spread. And all those are here, they are ambassadors of all their countries. So surely they will tell to their parents and the society also. It will catch up. This fire will catch up, you will see one day. You are going, you will speak to your people, <coughs> to your friends, and you will know what is happening. You will see there will be tremendous change. I am very sure about it. Now the times are coming. We have to learn lessons from the previous destructions of the atomic experiments. Still, we have not forgotten Hiroshima, you see, in Japan, still. Those people are still suffering. We can't forget it. So we must learn lesson and spread the message of love as during the time of Ashoka there was all peace. There were no wars. And he sent his own daughter and son to Sri Lanka and to China and in the eastern countries, you see, how it was spread from one person sitting under the Bodhi tree, how this message of peace was spread throughout the world. I am very sure that this flame is very powerful and love is very powerful <coughs> and this conflagration cannot be stopped even with chemical weapons. You simply meditate even in your own apartment, even in your own apartment, <laughs> all alone, you will see the result. Keep quiet, send the message of peace, let there be peace. 
all over the world that all beings live happy in peace. And what about this? What about this wavelength? This has to work. Pray that it does. Let's pray that it does. Let's hope that it does. Mm -hmm. Let's hope. Let's hope that not it does. Not hope. Hope. Not. I don't believe in hope. <laughs> hope is future. Let us. Let us trust in supreme power. Even this. Let us trust. Let us trust on supreme power. And it would look after very well, you see. It would change instantly. <laughs> so you pray to Supreme Power, please help us to be in peace with all living beings. Please teach us, not to others. To others is very easy to teach others. First, let us learn ourselves. See. So don't help others as you are writing, asking a question. You first help yourself, teach yourself, learn yourself. What have you learned? Mm -hmm. What have you learned from your years as a teacher? Huh? What have you learned from your years as a teacher? I'm not a teacher. Who told you I'm a teacher? <laughs> <laughs> Ask so many people are here. Mm. I have never had not a teacher. Teachers, teaching is always of the past. And the teacher is one who tells you, do this, do that. If you don't, you will go to hell. This is a teacher. I am neither a teacher nor a preacher. <laughs> Okay, I'll rephrase the question. <laughs> <laughs> what have you learned from sitting in this spot it's at satsang over the years? Love. Only, <laughs> only love. Only love. I love them. I love them and I love them. Why them, Papa? Don't you love me too? <laughs> I don't include you in this because you are beloved. Therefore, I love them and you are my beloved. What does it mean? Hmm? Yes. Because you are my beloved, you are seated next to me. You are seated next to me. Is it? Thank you, Papa. Thank you for coming here. Thank you for coming here. I thank you. We are all on behalf of myself. I thank you. And on behalf of my children, I thank you again and again. <laughs> I'm very happy for your questions. We are all benefited with your with these questions and with this satsang also and this vibration and all what has happened it is not confined only to this satsang bhavan it is already transmitted all over the world you will see <laughs> <laughs> Papa you have a very broad wavelength <laughs> Any kind of dish can receive this signal. Mm -hmm. Any kind of dish, any size dish can receive your signal. Mm. No dish and no signal. <laughs> <laughs> mm.
<laughs> you don't need any signals. You need two to, to, to signal to. You need two to signal to, isn't it? The transmitter and the receiver. Huh? Huh? <laughs> yes, yes. When will I learn? Now. <laughs> You are answering my question, no? <laughs> you asked me so many questions and I asked you only one question. And here is the answer. Here is the signal without signaling. <laughs> Isn't it? Hmm? What is this? At least you can tell me now. <laughs> Interview is over. Now you can at least tell me. <laughs> What is this? What is this? What is happening inside? What is this enjoyment? <laughs> now you see all cells are enjoying. Do you see now? Enjoying nectar. <laughs> questions with me. So, this is the pages. You yeah, want to so take you have a this a child? Yeah. Them all. You answered them all. Oh, so. <laughs> I thought there were some pretty tricky questions. <laughs> <laughs> they all have exactly the same answer. <laughs>
Who can sing a song before we leave? <laughs> hmm? huh? Who will sing something? And that that boy from Amsterdam is here? Amsterdam is not here, something. Right. You stay there before him, somebody else will come. Hmm? Wait. You pick up somebody else. Ah, with him I want to sing. Who offers? Hmm? Huh? Not The other day, one girl was singing, you know what is that? <coughs> she was singing very good, no I don't remember. <laughs> mm. Float then, float only. It's nice, and then Pratima will sing now. Pratima. <laughs> this boy, my look, I will call him. This boy, behind the woman, Indian woman. Uh, she's behind the Indian woman, that boy is fully. Yeah. She's from Bali. Bali, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> This overwhelming freedom, your gift of love and grace. Apogee, 
your all-consuming love creates this thing. Such deep silence within me, eternally joyful just to be. <laughs> Uh, yeah, sure. Go on, yes, yes. My voice is, hasn't improved. Name and form are but a notion. Waves belong unto the ocean. Freedom is a reality beyond duality. Life's a dream. There is no space or time. I have no heart, nor is the body mind dancing through all eternity as one was passed by sea. <laughs> master, oh my beloved master. You have given the answer that who I really am is who I've always been. Master, you are joy and love and light, pure consciousness, your bliss and your delight. Oneness has always been the goal. I love you, heart and soul. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.